By the late 1960s, the vampire mythos had seemingly run its course within its current format. While the Hammer Dracula franchise would continue to burn through sequels well into the mid-70s, and there wouldn't be a shortage of significantly lower quality and much more heavily eroticised vampire films clinging to the cowls that Horror of Dracula delivered back in 58 right the way through the 60s, the entire idea had seemingly stalled. In much the same way that zombie movies by 2019 standards are effectively done, by the late 60s, vampire movies were widely considered much the same. Enter Bob Kelgen, a reasonably new to the scene filmmaker who had previously directed one other film, Flesh of My Flesh, which could generously be described as an incest porno. It's the film that he made immediately after that's the subject of today's review and it's only through a very particular set of circumstances that we ended up where we did. Count Yorga Vampire, also known as The Lovers of Count Yorga, is a 1970 movie that attempts to retell the initial vampire mythos within the context of what would have been the modern day, 1970s LA. That may not sound like a particularly big deal as of the 21st century, but it is worth remembering that all of the Dracula films to come out up to this point were vaguely set within a 40 year window of the book's original publication, and that none of the films released up to this point had actually tried to 100% modernise the story. Even films like Nosferatu and The Universal Dracula, which were set in the 20s and 30s, endeavoured to move the main characters as soon as possible to a remote location with 19th century overtones. In short, this film was a game changer. It effectively put it on the table that films like Dracula didn't have to remain trapped within the century that they were created. This burst open the doors on the very concept of vampires and paved the way for hundreds of films on vampires to be set both in the far past, the present, and the far future. Had this film not been made, it's entirely possible that the likes of The Lost Boys, Twilight, and John Carpenter's Vampires would have never existed, or would have been set in the 19th century. Count Yorga originally began life as a softcore porn flick, but for whatever reason the more intense softcore scenes were removed from the film shortly before its release. If I was going to hazard a guess I would say it was to allow for the maximum amount of audience to be reached as softcore scenes may have put cinemas off screening it. The title of the film was also changed from The Lovers of Count Yorga to Count Yorga Vampire. Though this was made after the original camera negative was struck, and as I'm watching the Arrow video release of this film for the purposes of this review, it still remains with its original title. Kelgin was responsible for both writing and directing this film, and while it was only the second film he'd ever written or directed, and this would be only one of three writing credits, the other two being the aforementioned Flesh of My Flesh, and the final one being the sequel to Count Yorga, he went on to have a reasonably comprehensive and varied career as a director, with titles including Scream Blackula Scream and TV shows like Hill Street Blues. In fact, up until his death in 1982, at the age of 52, he pretty much covered most genres and formats of presentation, leaving his stamp across the media spectrum. Why would I bring such a particular note to Kelgen in this capacity? Well, it's because Count Yorga is a bit of a sleeper classic, ultimately. At the time it was successful, but wasn't regarded particularly highly. However, retrospectively, it could be seen as effectively refreshing and rebooting the entire idea of vampires within popular culture. Effectively instilling the idea that vampires didn't necessarily have to be ancient mythical beings, and that instead they could exist in the modern day and actually strike a resonance with young adults of the time. Now I'm not going to sit here and try and make out that Count Yorga Vampire was the perfect example of 70s culture, but this film does go a long way to illustrating what a vampire of the 1970s would behave and react like. Yorga's a little unusual, but blends into the scene as part of the counterculture culture that was very prevalent at the time. <laughs> 
In short, Yorga is able to do what he's able to do because he comes across as distant and a bit odd. And at the time, that was seen as in and very cool. The plot is a little bit difficult to explain, but I'll try my best to. In all honesty, there isn't really that much of a plot to talk about, which is why it's so obtuse. The film kind of inserts a scenario and then allows the characters to roll with it, rather than it being a traditional three-act structure. So a gang of young, middle-aged adults are attending a seance when things get a bit unusual and spooky. Yorga, who here is acting as the head of the seance, uses this opportunity to hypnotise Donna, one of the attendees of the seance and devout partner to Michael. He does this to get her to do his bidding on request, though honestly it doesn't really matter if you remember any of the other couples in this outside of this pair and another couple called Erica and Paul. This is because, as I mentioned earlier, the film had a lot of the softcore scenes removed from it and as a result, most of the people who attended this seance in the beginning are introduced and then pretty much disappear after this scene permanently. I think this is because they were predominantly here to facilitate the porn. So Erica and Paul offer to give Yorga a lift home after the seance takes a bit of a dark turn, and while trying to get home after dropping Yorga off they get stuck in the mud, and they decide to hunker down for the night and try to leave in the morning. That night Yorga attacks and kills Paul and bites Erica, turning her into one of his loves. From there, Erica begins to act erratically, feeling weird sensations, and in one of the film's more shocking sequences, she's seen eating a cat. They try everything from full blood transfusions to keeping a vigilant watch over her, but nothing seems to work, until Yorga arrives and spirits her away to his castle. From there, the gang, or at least what's left of them, must mount a dangerous rescue attempt, storming the castle and taking on Yorga's henchmen and his other loves, in an attempt to rescue Erica and Donna, who, while hypnotised, also disappears shortly after Erica. I will be honest, I went into this film with some serious reservations, but then I feel somewhat justified in being worried about this film, as the director had only ever worked in porn before, and this was only his second ever credit ever. But I have to say that this film was actually pretty bloody good. It's a bit rough around the edges in places, but for the most part I can genuinely say that this film, for the time, was pretty revolutionary. You have to imagine that this film came out before Dracula 1972, Salem's Lot, or even Blackula, and in many ways it could be seen that had this film not been made, that those films would have been very distinctly different. For starters, the cinematography is bloody good for the time, and genuinely quite unique. There's a lot of very moody lighting and some really quite interesting compositional choices, which when mixed together produces several shots that look about 5-10 to ten years ahead of their time. While I would grumble that there isn't really a lot of emphasis on character placement within the shots, 9 times out of 10 their placements just seem to sit right with me. And other than the occasional wobbly shot, everything for the most part looks and feels right. I'd have never have guessed that this film was early 70s. I'd have thought it late 70s, if not early 80s, trying to ape a 60s look at best. That's how ahead of its time the cine is for this, and it's arguably one of the biggest standout elements. The direction, while slightly less stellar, is still really quite impressive for the time also. Actors don't really have a lot of guidance over where they need to be in the shot, and for the most part it does rather seem like they've just been told to get into a position they're comfortable with and improvise their way through the scene in a way that feels right to them. And because of this, there are often moments that do rather feel a bit cluttered and messy. Though rather by accident, this sometimes creates some genuinely quite nice shots, and even some of the blunders that arise as a result of the direction Yorga having a reflection, for example, I can overlook because it works within the context of this film. While they may not have been guided particularly well in the way of physical direction, I do have to concede that the acting in this is quite a bit better than I was expecting. Honestly, I was thinking this was going to be a very cheesy mess, but quite pleasantly the performances, for the most part, are pretty decent. For the time. <laughs> 
I'm not going to sit here and pretend that they're perfect, but within the context of very early 70s low-budget horror movie, the performances live up to and for the most part exceed my expectations. There's actually a sense of believability, which I often find absent in films from early horrors of the 70s. So I was genuinely pleased that the cast here give a good and solid performance, and that they appear to have been guided quite well in terms of how to deliver lines and how to keep correct pacing. In particular, I feel the need to single out Robert Quarry's performance as Count Yorger himself. He brings a very unique performance to proceedings, and while I will be honest and say that he isn't particularly a dashing Count, he more than makes up for it in a charismatic performance that left me wanting to see more. Unfortunately, he didn't really stay within the horror genre, and other than one or two other appearances in other horror films, he tended to stick to television after the Yorga films, which is a shame, because I would have loved to have seen him perform in more horror and sci-fi given the chance. I also have to say, and this is probably the thing I like least about this film, is that the editing is a little bit slapdash. Shots often over or under run, there's not really a sense of pacing within the cuts, and while it's not the worst edited film I've ever seen, it does rather have a bit of an issue with precision. Match shots in particular can be a bit of a joke at times, and it does sometimes feel like the editors have been guided to just overlay every shot they can on top of each other. Though this does work to the film's advantage with its closing freeze frame, which personally I'd say works rather brilliantly in subverting audience expectation. Finally, the soundtrack, which is fairly noticeable by its absence. This film doesn't really have much in the way of music, and what music it does have is a bit stocky. But when it does turn up, I can say it's fairly appropriate for its time. The lack of a regular soundtrack also makes this film much more atmospheric, in my opinion, as the lack of a score is quite unusual, so when I was expecting scenes to be punctuated by stings, I was surprised to find an eerie silence. While I don't think this was an intentional choice, I can certainly say that for me, the silence in some scenes worked better than the standard form stocky stuff. The Count Yorga collection was released in 2016 by Arrow Video, and I must say Arrow have done a positively astounding job of remastering this one. When I said that this film looks nothing like a movie from 1970, I really wasn't kidding, and the attention to detail that this remaster has provided is frankly astounding. It just flat out doesn't look like a film that I could point at and say, this film was made in 1970. It looks much too modern for that. So serious kudos to everyone involved in the remaster of these films. I really don't think this could look any better than it currently does. It's still well in print, and it's currently at a more than reasonable price. All I can say is, if you haven't seen this movie before, go and grab it. Not only will you be surprised at just how fresh it looks, I guarantee you'll be amazed at just how many films rip it off. Even in the modern day. Despite a somewhat mediocre ending, Count Yorga Vampire absolutely blew me away in terms of what it was capable of. The film really has been mismarketed over the years, and while I was expecting to walk into typical B-movie fodder, what I actually got was a surprisingly inventive and subvertive take on a plotline that was bordering on 75 years old at this point. With absolutely amazing lighting for the time, a reasonable script, fantastic cine, a decent set of direction and acting, I can only wholeheartedly recommend you check out Count Yorga. It's a clear dividing point between vampires of the old age and the start of the new wave vampire movies that would follow. While film companies would continue to release films centred around the classic mythology, this was the opening of a Pandora's box of sorts, and from here the history of vampires would never really be the same again. Though if you want an example of just how much of an influence this film would have over the mainstream interpretation of vampires and vampire lore, join us next week when we jump ahead by nearly 10 years and see just how much of the cinematic landscape has changed as a result of this movie.